soft tissue tumors. First of the soft tissue tumors is the pyogenic granuloma. Clinically, it will show as an um, show as an smooth lobulated mass can I can be pedunculated but sometimes sessile but most of the times it's pedunculated it's pink to red to purple in color and may sometimes grow from millimeters to several centimeters in diameters this pyogenic granuloma is an exuberant tissue response to irritation or trauma so kapag nagkakaroon na uh, naiirita yung interdental papila natin or, or for example na tuso masinita ng pagkain na irita yon doon nagkakaroon ng pyogenic granuloma uh, sometimes kapag yun din interdental um interdental o yung area na yon um merong nagkaroon ng calcular deposit yon doon siya pwedeng magsimula this pyogenic granuloma is painless but it bleeds easily Pyogenic granuloma has a predilection to the gingiva, but it can also occur on the lips, the tongue, and the buccal mucosa. But it is more common seen, commonly seen in the gingiva. It is more commonly seen in the maxilla than in the mandible, and more on the anterior than in the posterior. Okay. So this is common in children and in young adults. And kapag buntis yung babae. Actually, it's between the first trimester up to the second month, a uh, seventh month. Okay? This happens because of the changes in hormonal imbalance, or this happens due to the hormonal imbalance in pregnant women. Yeah. Konting um, dumilang, nairita ka agad, nairita ka agad yung gingiva. Yun. Or minsan, kahit walang dumi, bigla na na magkakaroon. So this is how a pyogenic granuloma looks like. Kung mapapansin nyo, more of the anterior talaga siya. Ito, anterior. Anterior, anterior. Ito, anterior siya pero nasa may palatal banda. Anterior din to. Ito, nasa dula. Okay, so this one, it only, sh uh, only shows at, show shows at us that it doesn't only occur on the gingiva but also on the tongue. Ganyan siya ka-red. So, minsan nga, red to purple, yun yun yung kulay niya. Depende. Okay, minsan, nagiging um, pale na kasi nagkakaroon ng fibros, fibrosis dun sa area. Okay. Histolog histopathologically, it shows a high vascular proliferation with very small to large endothelium line channels. Okay. High vascular proliferation, meaning nagkaroon na siya ng mga uh, maliliit na blood vessels. Endothelium line channels. Kasi, ibig sabihin, what, uh, what do we mean by endothelium line channels? It's, it's simply the vascular um, vessels. Epithelial surface is usually ulcerated. Kasi nga, madal, tapos kaya mas madali, mabilis magdugo. Inflammatory cell infiltrate, madami din ito makikita, like neutrophils, plasma cells, and lymphocytes. It may have areas of fibrous appearance. Sabi ko sa inyo kanina, like yung pinakita ko, tulad nito, may mga fibrous appearance na siya. Ibig sabihin, um, relatively matanda na yung area na to kumpara sa ibang area. So ito yung itsura niya, histopathologically. Ito yung gross examination, but on a closer look, ito yung makikita natin. So makikita nyo, ito, blood vessel to. Ito din, isang blood vessel pa ito. Ito din. So ito mga to, endothelial lining yan. One, um, one cell layer na endothelial lining. Yan, blood vessel din to. Ito mga red na ito, ito yung mga RBC, yung mga red blood cells. Kaya masasabi natin na it's highly vascularized or yung proliferation ng vascular vessels ay sobrang dami. Yan. Okay. So, ito yung patag mnemonic feature. Patag mnemonic histopathologic feature ng pyogenic granuloma. Okay. The treatment for this one is a more of a conservative surgical excision na tatanggalin lang excision 
then okay na. Okay. Or, you can just remove any source of continuing irritation. Pag may nakita ka doon na madaming calcular deposits, sometimes, remo just removing the calcular deposits, after a few days, mawawala na yung, yung significant na size ng pyogenic granuloma. Okay. Minsan kapag buntis, pag nagkaroon ng pyogenic granuloma yung buntis, hinihintay lang na, magka na manganak yung patient. Hindi agad-agad natatanggalin. Kasi once na nanganak yung patient, bumalik yung balance niya or um, balance in sa hormones niya, bumabalik, I mean, nawawala kaagad yung pyogenic, nawawala din yung pyogenic granuloma. Okay? So kapag buntis, hindi agad-agad in-excise. Hinaantay muna na mga anak siya and then wait for a few days or weeks siguro and then follow up niyo yung patient. And then minsan nawawala na lang talaga yung patient na garing niloma sa buntis. But if hindi buntis yung patient, like for example, yung mga lalaki nagkaroon ng patient na garing niloma, hindi nyo na kailangan antayin na mga anak kasi hindi siya mga anak. So kailangan nyo, alisin talaga siya, excise nyo siya. Minsan kapag sobrang laki naman, uh, um, yung um, pag sobrang laki ng pension na karinuloma sa mga babae na even if tanggalin yung calcular deposit, malaki pa din siya, ina-excise na siya para matulungan kasi nandun na din yung aesthetic problem at saka yung function niya. Okay? So there is a tendency for recurrence about around 3% to 15%. Ito yung sinasabi ko kanina na if developed during pregnancy, yan, pwede yung antayin muna na mga anak siya O, except if merong functional or aesthetic problems, pwede nyo tanggalin through surgical excision. Next is the giant cell granuloma. Um, the clinical features are as follows. Um, giant cell granuloma is exclusively on the gingiva or edentulous ridge. Hindi nyo ito makikita sa ibang lugar. Specific ito sa gingiva and edentulous ridges. Sometimes it can be red or red-blue color, nodular mass, sometimes more blue to purple, more bluish to purplish than pyogenic granuloma. Less than 2 cm in diameter nito, commonly. And it's usually sessile or pedunculated. Any ages can be affected by this one, but within the first to six decades, usually on the female. Unlike the pyogenic granuloma, this occurs more on the, on the mandible than in the maxilla. And sometimes, on the radiograph, makakita tayo ng tapping of bone. Sabihin, parang nahukay niya yung part na bone na yun. Kaya nagkaroon ng radiographic uh, appearance. So ito yung sinasabi ko kanina, na bluish to purplish. Compared nyo naman sa pyogenic granuloma kanina. Ito mukhang pyogenic granuloma. Diba? Pwede yung ibigay na differential diagnosis. Ito, ang pyogenic, ang pyogenic granuloma, dito sa lesion na to. Pero pag ganito, iisipin nyo, ah, more of giant cell granuloma na talaga ito. Kasi purplish to bluish yung appearance. Okay. Histopathologically, you can see proliferation of multinucleated giant cells. Ito yung pathognomonic is the pathologic features niya, the multinucleated giant cells. Okay? And the stroma contains plump ovoid and spindle-shaped cells. We can also see um, mitotic figures. Um, hindi lang po yung granuloma yung may hemorrhage. Meron din tayo sa giant cell granuloma. And the mucosal sur surface of giant cell granuloma can, can also be ulcerated. Okay, so, di ba? Gross, um, gross mac uh, macroscopically, mukhang pyogenic granuloma siya. Pero pag tinignan nyo on a closer look, makikita nyo, isa itong giant cell granuloma, isa pa itong giant cell granuloma, isa din itong giant cell granuloma. Paano at bakit natin nasabing giant cell granuloma? Kasi makikita nyo yan, multinucleated, madaming nucleus yung isang cell. Yan, yan, madaming nucleus. Okay? Then makikita nyo yung mga reddish appearance na yan, mga red blood cell yan. Hindi man sila contained sa isang blood vessels, however, they are scattered. Scattered, kaya siya, sabi natin na prominent yung hemorrhage niya. Okay? So that is giant cell granuloma. Giant cell granuloma. 
Treatment for this one is local surgical excision and the removal of any source of irritation. There is around 10% to 18% recurrence for giant cell granuloma. Next, we have the fibroma. Fibroma is the most common soft tumor in the oral cavity. Okay, it can occur in the buccal mucosa along with the bite line. It is usually smooth and color pink nodule. It says more of sessile than pedunculated. Okay. Again, it is more sessile. It is usually it has usually it has a 1.5 centimeter or less diameter. No symptoms unless ulcerated and occurs on fourth to sixth decade and more on female patients. So ito siya. Ito yung nasa may bakal mucosa, bakal mucosa on the bite line. Okay, kaya madalas nakakagat siya. Makikita nyo, pinkish in color, smooth din siya. Kaya pwede din yung mangyari sa palate and sa tongue. Ayan, pinkish, sessile, di ba? Hindi siya pedunculated. Sessile, ining broad yung base niya. Kaya siya ganyan. Histopathologic feature shows fibrous connective tissue which are dense and collagenized. It shows stratified squamous epithelium, yung covering niya, overlying the connective tissue, is a stratified squamous epithelium. It is non-encapsulated, and it blends gradually into the surrounding connective tissue. There are also inflammatory infiltrates that you can see, like for example, lymphocytes and plasma cells. So ito siya histopathologically. So wala siyang capsule, makikita niyo walang capsule. Stratified squamous epithelium ay yung, yung lining niya sa yung mucosal, mucosal lining. Pero yung connective tissue, makikita niyo yung mga pinkish na yan, yung mga pink na yan, are connective uh, tissue fibro. fibro. Fibrous connective tissue, mga fiber, collagen fibers. Yan. And within that, embed sa loob, ay yung mga lymphos, lymphocytes, lymphocytes, uh, inflammatory infiltrates. Treatment for fibroma is also the same, like yung mga nauna, conservative, conservative surgical excision. The recurrence of this one is very rare. Okay. Next, we have the giant cell fibroma. Okay. Clinical features, it is not associated with the chronic irritation. Um, kaya siya iba with fibroma. Okay. Kasi yung fibroma, means an irritation. Caused by irritation din siya. Yung laging nababait, laging natatamaan, kaya nagkaroon ng fibroma. Pero for giant cell fibroma, it is not associated with chronic irritation. It is also sometimes, most of the time, asymptomatic. Most of the time, it's sessile. And usually, less than 1 cm in size. It can occur on younger age, from 1st to 3rd decade. Again, it has a female predilection and can be um, Located in the gingiva, the tongue, and the palate. Yeah, on the gingiva, here on the tongue. Okay, mukha din siyang fibroma, no? Pero kung titignan yung size, mas maliit siya with fibroma. Okay? So, makakatalo-talo talaga to with the histopathologic features. Doon yung talaga makikita kung fibroma ba siya or giant cell fibroma. Histopathologically, it is also contained it, is also, it also contains fibrous connective tissues, which are loosely arranged. Pero yung pinakas-patog ng monic histopathologic feature nito is yung numerous large stellate fibro fibroblast in a superficial connective tissue containing several nuclei. Yung surface ng lesion na to, most of the times pebbly, and epithelium tint atrophic cartilage, narrow and elongated. So ito siya. Ito siya gross, mac mac uh, gross macroscopically. Ito siya on a closer look. Nakikita nyo, bukod sa mga collagen fibers, meron tayo mga multinucleated fibroblast. Yan yung mga purple, purple na yan. Multinucleated fibroblast siya. Okay. This is how it differs with the fibroma, histopathologically. Okay. So the treatment for this one is a conservative surgical excision. The recurrence 
is rare. Okay. And the last one, I think the last one is the peripheral ossifying fibroma. Um, clinically, it uh, it is exclusive in the gingiva. Sa gingiva nyo lang makikita. It is colored red to pink then. It's more pedunculated than cesar. Usually sa interdental papilla. This one has a female predilection with less than 2 cm in size. Okay, nangyayari din to sa mga younger generations, so teenagers and young adults mostly, around 10 to 19 years, years old. Um, if magkaroon ng peripheral ossifying fibroma, pwede magkaroon ng migration and loosening of the So ito siya. Okay. So mukhang din siyang, ano, no? mukha din siyang pyogenic granuloma or peripheral giant cell granuloma or giant cell granuloma. No? Pwede yung pinkish. So ito, sa, sa, sa interdental papila, sa interdental papila, sa gingiva. Exclusive sa gingiva. Isopathologic features shows fibrous proliferation. And of course, the pathognomonic feature ng peripheral ossifying fibroma is the formation of a mineralized fiber product like bone, cementum-like material, or dystrophic calcification. Sabi ko kanina, some cases looks like pyogenic granuloma with mineralization. Yes, pyogenic granuloma can also have mineralization, but pyogenic granuloma will show vascular proliferation. For peripheral ossifying fibroma, meron siyang mineralized product, pero fibrous yung proliferation niya. Ito siya. Ayan. So, wala tayong makikita masyadong vascular proliferation. Makikita natin cellular and fibrous proliferation with mineralized product. This one. Ayan, mineralized product itong mga to. Ayan, yung mga purple dots na yan, yun yung mga mineralized product na cementum-like. Ito, bony-like itong mga to. Ito nagsisimula na. Ayan. Nagsisimula na sila. Ito, hmm, magiging bone niya. So, ito yung patagnomonic feature ng peripheral ossifying syndrome. Histopathologically. Treatment for this one is local excision. Okay? However, if you are suspecting na peripheral ossifying fibroma yung PC nyo, you have to excise the lesion down to the periosteum. And you also have to eliminate possible irritants to avoid recurrence. Kasi meron pa rin recurrence rate na 8% to 16%. Okay? So that is, um, that is the summary of um, the soft tissue tumors. Meron tayong lima. Okay? So I hope na alam nyo na kung paano sila i-differentiate. Even if pare-pareha sila ng um, appearance clinically. Pero more or less with the information that you have, lalo na kapag alam nyo kung saan siya exclusive, somehow alam nyo na kung ano yung mga ibibigay nyo yung differential diagnosis sa mga soft tissue tumors na nakikita nyo. Okay? And that's it. So, thank you. And thank you.